Welcome back to the video on goods and services tax cascading effect. So I hope you have gone through the previous video in which the calculation of indirect tax was clearly depicted using the numerical examples. So once again let's go through it. The total cost of production of a product comes to 1900 rupees and after the tax addition the total price of the product comes to rupees 2579.50 so the final consumer needs to pay this sum of money or this sum of price to buy or to purchase that product, particular product so here in tax cascading uh, effect what happens is the tax is paid by the purchaser of the product on the tax already charged or levied okay so let's see what is the case in GST calculation. So under GST calculation we take the same example where the manufacturer uh, manufactures or produces toy products and the tax is at 10 percentage constant okay. So he purchases raw materials at rupees uh, 1000 and uh, here also there is 10 percentage of tax. So the total cost amounts to rupees 1100. So he pays rupees 1100 to purchase the raw materials. So the actual tax liability comes to rupees 100. Then the product goes to the second stage where the manufacturer has a value addition of rupees 400. So value addition means the manufacturer after purchasing the raw materials he may have converted the raw materials into a product which is not the final product but he has converted the raw materials to a product and where the cost of the product was added up by the value addition so earlier before GST regime the calculation was the total amount or the total cost of the product that is 1100 was added with the value addition of rupees 400 but here the cost of the product actual cost of the product before paying tax is added with value addition so 1000 plus 400 which comes to rupees 1400 so we take tax at 10 percentage which is uh, 140 and the total comes to 1400 plus 140 that is 1540 rupees okay so here the actual tax liability in this stage is 40 rupees the product goes to the next stage that is the wholesaler so wholesaler again adds a value to the product of rupees 300 so the cost of the product is added with the value addition of rupees 300 not the actual cost in earlier case the actual cost of the product that is total cost 1540 was added with this 300 if it was in the case of indirect tax but in GST calculation this 1400 cost is added with the value addition of rupees 300 which amounts to rupees 1700 so tax is charged that is rupees 170 the total cost of the product comes to 1870 okay so finally when the product reaches the consumer he needs to pay a sum of rupees 2090 only to purchase the product and the actual tax liability of the final consumer upon whom the burden of indirect tax falls is only rupees 190 but see what is in the case of indirect tax regime before GST the final consumer needs to pay rupees 2579.5 rupees as the price of the product and the actual tax liability came up to 679 rupee which is about six times more than what is in the case of GST calculation okay so from this what can we conclude so the sale price is reduced and the cost price for the buyer is reduced in the case of GST because of the lower tax liability. So in the case of GST calculation the final value comes up to rupees 2090 
whereas in earlier indirect tax regime it was 2579.5 rupees so i hope you have understood the concept of tax cascading right so this is the difference see how much amount of money is different here so the main reason behind one of the main reasons behind gst implementation is to eliminate or to avoid the tax cascading effect okay so the when the raw materials or the finished products pass through different hands or stages or states the tax cascading effect will be very high so as a result of that the prices of the final products shoots up illogically without any relation to the cost of production so goods and services tax system addresses all these problems and the gst implementation helped the consumer to pay a less price as compared to the earlier situations thank you